I trust everyone's doing well today. I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me. Here we are looking at the area formula derivation of ellipse using double integral technique. x square or a square plus y square or b square equals 1. A horizontal oriented ellipse standard orientation origin at 0 comma 0. You know it looks something like this. That's what it looks like. Your vertices minus a comma zero, a comma zero, minor axis and point zero comma b, and a zero comma minus b. We want to determine the area formula of that. We know what it is from our other procedures, but here we're doing with double integrals. You can start with this and do a common denominator for which you'll get x square b square plus y square a square is equal to a square b square. This common denominator can multiply across. If you were to solve everything here with regards to y equals you will have a radical equation for which your ellipse will now become like this and you end up determining only half. You have to end up multiplying by 2 to capture the lower half. But I want to solve everything here for x because I want to do this integral with respect to dx but I want to integrate it upwards with respect to dy for which I need the equation in x equals format. And we already know we still have to multiply by 2, so we can leave that for later on. You would solve for x here. That would be advisable. x squared b squared is equal to a squared b squared minus y squared a squared. And you solve for x. You have a squared b squared minus y squared a squared over b squared. And you square root that. You can isolate from here in a squared, which would be a b squared minus y squared all over b squared. And then this is all under a root. When you clean it out, you really have an a over b root b squared minus y squared. That's exactly what it is. And this is what's going to come into play with regards to these limits. You see how you have a minus a and an a. You would trace up upwards, but you're going to end up converging on this curve as you're going up from your lower limit to your upper limit. Well, these have to come into play one right here and one right here your integral will become this you have this minus a comma zero a comma zero minus a to a well this one will become here a minus a or b root b square minus y square the a comma zero will just be here the positive counterpart of it a or b times b square minus y square with respect to dx all of this now will integrate upwards with respect to dy but what is your interval it's not minus b to b, it's right here from 0 up to b. Because we already know we're looking at half by means of the radical if you had solved for y equals format. So we have to multiply everything by 2 and I can bring that 2 right over here now. Now we have to integrate all this. When you look at this inner dx integral, you know the antiderivative is an x. You have an a over b square root b square minus y square and then you have the minus version, the negative version, b square minus y square root and all of this. You'll do upper limit, lower limit, and the difference of the two, you'll really just get a positive minus minus will become a positive. You'll have 2a or b root b square minus y square. It's like saying a minus minus a is a 2a. All of this right here will now serve as the integrand for your dy. There's variables in here, there's constants. This part right here can go out with the 2. 2 times this 2 is a 4, and then you have an a or b. You'll have a 0b integral, and this here is your variable p squared minus y squared with respect to dy for which now you must do trigonometric substitution. A certain radius here is equal to this b. I'm using a prime over here because normally you put an a over here. a prime just differentiates it from this a over here is equal to b. y is equal to b sine theta. dy is equal to b cosine theta d theta and new limits theta 1, theta 2. You've seen all of this with circle and ellipses in our regular single integral procedures, you've seen that. You'll have here a 0 and a pi over 2, everything with respect to this, 0 and a b going into place, and you're doing arc sine of 0 and arc sine of 1. Bring all of that into play. There's a 4a over b, 0 to pi over 2. You bring these substitutions in here and you know what's going to happen. You'll have a b squared minus b squared sine squared theta times b cosine theta d theta. You do all of that trigonometric identity, simplification, isolation you'll have b squared cosine squared theta d theta come out of it. I don't have to show you all of that because we've seen it so many times. This b squared can come out. 4a b squared over b in integral 0 pi over 2 cosine squared theta d theta. And you know you're going to bring a power reducing identity or a half angle formula over there. And let's do it. But let's do it down over here. When you do all of that, you simplify this b and this b squared. You have here a 4ab 
integral 0 pi over 2 your half angle or power reducing identity 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2 d theta divided by 2 and this 4 can cancel out right now and you can simplify it here you'll end up having a 2 ab and I'm bringing it right here separate everything across this positive sign you have here a 2 ab integral 0 pi over 2 d theta plus 2 ab integral 0 pi over 2 cosine 2 theta d theta now you know you've seen this so many times this part right over here you know all of this will zero out because when you do the u substitution u is equal to 2 theta the limits will change to 0 and a pi your antiderivative will be a sine sine of 0 sine of pi is a 0 all of that zeroes everything out the only thing which really remains is this which will give you your area formula pi a b the antiderivative coming here is a theta. We will erase this part which has now become irrelevant and will compute it and complete it for you here. 2ab theta pi over 2 0. Don't put even a 0. 2ab times pi over 2 is a pi ab which is your area formula for all of this. Remember the times 2 has already taken care of that and has been incorporated early on. So our derivation procedure is complete. Area of an ellipse pi ab is right. We start here with our integral with regards to dx. We integrate upwards with regards to dy and the double integral is right over here. 2 integral 0 to b, your x integral and then your dy integral. It encapsulates your dx integral. That's all I'm showing you here for this video. Thank you for watching.